Hello everyone, Coach Carol here with you with the next segment in the Genealogy with AI series, all about revamping genealogy projects with the ultimate AI squad. In this presentation, we're focusing on Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Claude is a little different in its structure and the way in which you can set up projects in the background to organize your conversations. So we'll get into that in a moment. First, I want to share these few slides with you to help get you organized and prepare. And knowing that there are these things called projects inside Claude, then we need to plan to create them. First thing is to decide what you need to achieve, just as we do with every other genealogy project. What's our goal? And knowing that will help you build a project knowledge base, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. You can then use Claude to help in three different areas. Some guidance, for, for example, helping you create an ancestral research plan. Two, creating content such as scripts and creating artifacts, which are really just documents that you can then download from Claude. And the third one, designing stories in formats such as profiles and biographies. So that's our aim. In setting up your knowledge base, this is what it looks like inside Claude. You'll have a project area in which you can add content. And typically your project knowledge base will consist of documents or PDFs that you've uploaded, as you can see here in this example. You get quite a large repository for these knowledge base articles. And as you can see here, even though this one is a very large file, I've still only used 8% of the knowledge size in this project. It can include things like documents and images, such as this one of a handwritten census from 1851. So the knowledge base is where you collect the data from which you are helping Claude understand how to give you the output that you're looking for. In the project knowledge base, you can also give it specific instructions like this one. You are my instructional design assistant for ancestral storytelling. And you can keep adding to that so that your prompts don't need to be repeated all the time. So the knowledge base is inside the project. In getting it to create an ancestral research plan for you, you need to identify the purpose of this research plan and then give it the time frame that you want and then perhaps ask for a monthly schedule so that you can keep yourself to a timetable in this next part of your genealogy journey. As you're, I'm sure you'll have several research plans happening over one year. And I tend to break these down into those that I can accomplish within a month or perhaps a few weeks. So it's very good at giving you outlines like this, such as an ancestral research plan. And you can even ask it to present that to you in a tabular format and give it like a calendar. The project content will consist of scripts and artifacts, such scripts that you might want to use if you are planning a blog post about an ancestor, or perhaps you're doing a podcast. The artifacts are the documents and lists and other items that Claude produces for you. It will give you both scripts and artifacts if you give it the right form of prompting. So your project content is the results or the output. You can have several projects, by the way, but it helps contain all of those conversations within a specific area. 
so that you don't lose sight of them. It's a good filing system, in other words. Claude also helps me with my story output, especially if I'm producing ancestral profiles, biographies, and family histories. And I can ask for these in specific formats and get it to create them as artifacts that I can then download and save to my system. And it can be on absolutely anything. The story output feature of Claude is exceptional and I would recommend it for you to try. Next, we're going to set up your projects for you to use in your Claude 3.5 sonnet. I'll just go over to Claude. And I've set it up in the dark mode so that you can see what I'm doing a little more clearly. What you see is what normally happens when I first open Claude for myself. I'm on the professional plan and always greets me and says, how can I help? So I could put in my query here in the conversation box straight away if I wanted to. And it gives you this information about projects and says that it helps bring your docs, code and files to collaborate with Claude and your team. And below gives me a list of my recent chats. And some of those you'll see are attached to projects. But let's have a look at my projects and see what I've got. Clicking on projects brings me into the projects filing area. And I've recently begun to organize them with suitable headings so I can find things quickly and easily. I've got a couple of archive projects happening. One for my maternal family folders project and another for my We Are Family Archives. And then I have a couple of cousin projects happening here. I also have a genealogy too, a content designer and fiction writing. These are just like a folder system in your computer where you can organize your conversations. To create a project, use the orange button at the top. What I'm going to do is create a project for archive project two, which will be my paternal family folders project. But let's create a new one. Just give it a title and inside there, describe what you're trying to achieve and create the project. So it then takes me straight to the project and enables me to start the conversation straight away. And on the right hand side is where I can give it some project knowledge and set custom instructions. Let's do that first. And here it tells you what you can put in this box. So you want to instruct Claude on how to behave and respond for all of the chats within Archive Project 2. Instruct Claude with prompts like use a professional tone, use concise and simple wording, you are an expert in, etc. I'll put something simple in for now, like so, and then save instructions. And that little piece of text always appears up here on your project. Then I can add content and I can upload from device or I could add text content. But I'll upload from my device a couple of things that I have in mind. You won't see where I'm getting these from, but that's okay for the moment. I'm going into my family history legacy, into my paternal ancestry, and picking up a file. And this will be something simple like this fact sheet, which is a Microsoft document. And you'll see it now being added. So that's a document related to my father. And you can keep going. You can add quite a bit of information there. And here on the right hand side, you'll see where the project knowledge is and where the conversations are. Right, let's see how it sits within my system here. So I've now got archive project two, paternal family history. 
and now to explain the artefacts. I'm here in my project for the maternal family folders and I have some conversations that are recorded here about my great-great-grandmother Latisse Day. And what I wanted, first of all, was some generational details for Latisse to add to her ancestral profile. So I added those as a document into the knowledge base and then asked it to transform the generational detail for Latisse into her ancestral profile. And what it does here on the left, it tells you what it's going to do, tells you what it's done, and then asks if there are any further modifications or elaborations required. But it creates a document. And you can see this one over here on the list of artifacts, along with others that have been produced in this series of conversations. When I come back, I can simply open that document here by clicking and it shows me the ancestral profile that it first produced from the data that I gave it further down. I then asked it to transform the data into narrative once again as a document. And it did that and it's done it with the title, The Life and Legacy of Latisse Day. Once again, it tells me what it's done. I can click into it and have a look at how it has transformed the data into narrative. So it's a neat way for you to consider what you're going to do and how you can do it using documents, artifacts inside your projects with Claude. There are many other things that you can do with Claude, but I would suggest that you start with projects Create one in which you're going to store information and ask questions about specific family groups or specific lines of your genealogy to keep it all in order. Once you have your project, you can always go into one of these to see where you are up to. And it will show the chats down here below. So this is the one I showed you a moment ago, the ancestral profile. And then I've been doing some other work for this particular line in another series of conversations called Tracing Your Ancestral Footsteps. So it keeps all that in a separate area. If I click into that chat, it takes me back to where I was in getting this information ready. And in this case, I was asking it to help prepare for a virtual ancestral journey specifically about places in Wales where my great-grandmother came from. And once again, it's prepared a document called Preparing for Your Virtual Ancestral Journey, A Practical Guide. And it's done that over here on the right-hand side. This has now become a guide that I can share with others. And that document now sits within the project and I can find it easily. Anything that you have had Claude create can be added to the knowledge base by using this icon at the bottom, which says add to current project. By clicking that, it's now within the knowledge base of this project. Let me show you that. I'll go back to the project and now that document that it's provided has now been added. It's a really great way to keep everything really neatly organized. It still gives you on the left hand side a list of the recent conversations that you've had and those that you've starred and we can view all by going down here. I think Claude has a superior way of allowing you to organize things within your projects. So keep that in mind as you begin exploring how you're going to use Claude 3.5 Sonnet for your project.